Since a couple of days, I feel like I have a new camera. Well, I had it since November 2021, but I got an update that lets us achieve even more with it. I'm obviously talking about new firmware for the Sony FX3 version 2.0. Hey everyone, my name is Mariusz Gajdzik, I'm a filmmaker and photographer based in Poland and together with my girlfriend Martina we run a company called Slick Visuals where we produce photo and video content for our clients. A couple of days ago my camera didn't have simple menu that is enabling us to change settings much easier, didn't have the ability to use Cine AI that will let us film only in the base ISO values, didn't have ability to load custom LUTs to it, and it didn't have ability to properly sync it with timecode. As of today, the Sony FX3 has all of those features and you know what's the best about that? The fact that when I was buying it, it didn't have any of them and there was not even an info about the fact it might get it, even on the rumor websites about the Sony cameras. They were on a Sony FX6, however, a much bigger camera that cost $6,000, which is... Yeah, six thousand dollars what's that and now as the users of the sony fx3 who bought the camera similar to the sony a7s3 with the top handle over one year after the release get all those professional features from other cameras from sony cinema line like the fx6 fx9 or venice i won't be talking about how to install the new firmware as there is an instruction on their website I will mention however that after installing it the FX3 resets to factory settings so if you have any project that you need to film today or tomorrow uh, make sure you have plenty of time to make sure to be able to set it all up. We obviously can complain we still didn't get many of the function especially the shutter angle but we can also be happy we got an amazing update to a camera we got without all those features anyway. Even though I'm still wondering why we didn't get that shutter angle, I am happy with what we've got and now I'll tell you about those things. First thing we see just after we install the new firmware is the new record screen. All the basic informations are on the black parts of the top and the bottom of that screen. And thanks to that, we can monitor all our settings along with the battery levels, based on the memory card, and this info doesn't obstruct our frame, which is awesome. Next thing we've got is the ability to access the FN menu by swiping up from the bottom of the main screen. It's a small detail, but it makes our life much easier during filming. Another thing we get in the new firmware is entirely new main menu, which will help us quickly change settings like frame rate, shutter speed and again i need to say that here why not shutter angle which will automatically change with the frame rate not sure aperture base iso exposure index white balance lat we want to use file format record settings if we want to be displaying the lat proxy recording wind noise reduction audio recording levels, log shooting, APS-C mode, card format, recording media, file settings, exposure mode, stabilization, focus mode, focus area, face or IAF, as well as the face or IAF subject selection for human or animal. So we get the most of the settings we will have to change quickly in a really nice and a simple layout here. Additionally, the menu is fully compatible and it seems like it's made to be used with touch, which can be much easier to work with in many situations. Next thing in the new firmware is the new functions to set up the filming with lock and we've got four modes to choose from over here. Off. We cannot film lock in this mode, we'll be using that mode to film in a standard picture profile or without the picture profile. So profiles like Cine, HLG, Acinetone, just to name a few. 
and we can also create our new uh, picture profiles with the LUTs that we're gonna be able to put on the camera, but more about that in a minute. Flexible ISO, it will work the same way as filming log before the update. We can set the ISO from the entire range and this way we can change the exposure freely with the ISO. Cine EI, we can choose one of our base ISOs, 800 or 12800 and film in it. I've set changing the base ISO to ISO button on my camera which lets me change between them quickly. We can change exposure index to check how we will be able to change our exposure in post-production. It doesn't however affect the exposure of our output footage as this will always be filmed in the base ISO of 800 or 12800 and always have one exposure that we will be able to change in post-production. Exposure index is safe in metadata of file and thanks to that data we can change our exposure with it similarly to changing ISO in the camera, in the Catalyst Browse software from Sony or in the Catalyst Browse plugin for Premiere Pro. They say they will be releasing. I hope we will get ability to do that in other editing software as well, especially my favorite DaVinci Resolve. Quick Scene EI works the same as the regular Scene EI with one difference. By changing the exposure index on our wheel, we can change the base ISO to the second one when going over 3200. In the case of Scene EI, we need to do that with the menu or with the custom button. I'd say this may work well for those who are using the uh, flexible ISO or are used to that but want to take advantage to just film in the base ISOs. So as you can see we've got a lot of options on how we want to film and log right now and we can choose from those depending on our needs or the needs of the project and I think it's a huge upgrade especially for those who work on other cameras from Sony Cinema Line and use those modes. I think with this upgrade Sony is telling us that Sony FX3 is not just the A7S III with the XLR handle but a professional camera from their cinema line. Another thing in this firmware is ability to load custom LUTs into the camera and they will mainly work as a preview of converting the log to output in Rec. 709 but not just that. I've loaded my LUT that I used to use in external displays to monitor what I will get after converting the S-Log3 to Rec. 709 in DaVinci Resolve. And now when I don't want, I don't need to use the external screen for that. I can just use the same LUT on the camera screen and it's amazing upgrade in the situations we want to use the compactness of the Sony FX3 to its fullest, knowing that what we see on a screen we will get in the editing software as well. Additionally, we can create picture profiles from those LUTs, which will let us film our footage with the final look baked in. If we have a LUT we like to use and we want to skip the step of converting s 3 to Rec. 709, we can get the Rec. 709 from the picture profile made out of the LUT, the conversion LUT, and we can get that look straight out of the camera this way. So as you can see, the custom lag function gives us a lot of uh, possibilities to visually examine what we are filming as well as to configure uh, what we will get out of the camera as an output depending on our needs. Uh, thanks to that, we will be able to achieve what we want much easier. Uh, and if I'm most excited about one of those functions, it's gonna be this one, as I will be able to rely a lot more on the built-in screen which for me in many situations will eliminate the external monitor. Another upgrade is ability to sync timecode properly. We'll be able to connect a new timecode adapter via USB-C and synchronize the Sony FX3 with timecode and unfortunately I wasn't able to get this adapter so I wasn't able to test it out but if I do and if I have a chance to do that I will make a separate video about that. We also have a small addition in ability to add a marker onto our footage. To use it we will have to assign that function to a custom button on a camera.
We also have ability to manually set up the flip function of our screen with four different settings, whereas before the update, it was flipping automatically depending on the position it was in. As you can see, this is an amazing update for Sony FX3 and I'm really happy we got all that new functions. I feel like we actually got a new version of Sony FX3 because we sort of did. I also hope Sony won't stop here and they will give us even more functions adequate to the Sony Cinema line. And once again, I'm gonna say especially the shutter angle. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. And I'd also love if you check out my Instagram where I try to post daily about what's up with me and what I'm currently working on, as well as let you ask questions about the subject I will be making videos on. I think this is it for this video. I hope you liked it and I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye.